welcome to the University of Huddersfield again. Thank you. Um, In the third greatest region on Earth. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Tell Lonely Planet it. yesterday released their greatest regions in the world for 2014. And Yorkshire was number three after a state in the Himalayas and a place in Australia. So we are, Yorkshire is totally the hot place to go to for 2014. And we're not surprised at that. No, we're totally not. And they said in the third greatest region on earth, which is Yorkshire, the best bit of it is Huddersfield University. I, and I can't disagree with that either, <laughs> if I'm honest. Now, just, just tell me, you, you've moved on slightly from Innocent Smoothies. Uh, the three of you have moved on yep. slightly from Innocent Smoothies, and you've embarked on uh, a new initiative uh, called Jam Jar. Tell me a little bit about Jam Jar. Yeah, so Jam Jar is a business that myself, Adam and John, who were the three guys that said Innocent, we've now stood down from Innocent to set up Jam Jar and Jam Jar is essentially about seeking out, supporting and investing in a new wave of entrepreneurial talent. We want to pass on the business karma. When we were three 26 year olds trying to set up a business, we found it so difficult to find anyone that believed in us and was prepared to put money in. But we eventually found one guy and without him, there would have been no innocent. And so we want to pass on that sort of intergenerational bit of Business karma on to the next group of people. And how, how are you going to find these uh, these these businesses? I mean, they're they're, they're everywhere, aren't they? Everywhere. Well, the University of Huddersfield yeah. has an awful lot of students starting businesses. Yeah, do, you, do, you, do you start there? Do you look for them in in places like that? We look everywhere. I mean, we've gone from being a nation of shopkeepers to we're now a nation of entrepreneurs, and I think that is a that's a brilliant thing for the individuals. It's a brilliant thing for society. It's a brilliant thing for, for the world. We. We're just interested. So we're permanently on looking at anything that we think has got, well, that matches the three criteria. Because we're very clear with Jam Jar what the three things we look for. One is we've got to fall in love with the people. They've got to be exciting. We've got to learn from them. We've got to find them inspirational. The second thing is it's a business. We're not doing this as a charitable venture. So the idea has to be profitable and it has to be scalable and it has to be at the appropriate price. We're not going to we're not going to be soft about it because that's in no one's interest, including our own. And the third thing is it's got to make the world a bit better. We're not interested in backing things just for the money. We want to make sure that they sort of make a dent in the universe in a positive way. So that's the message. And anyone who's thinking they score three out of three, that they're you know exciting, inspirational people we can learn from, that their idea is profitable and scalable, and that it's going to make the world a little bit better, then we want to hear from them. And, and that follows the ethos of innocent, really, doesn't it? Absolutely. The, uh, Absolutely. Because in a way, that's why you, you uh, well, started Innocent Smoothies. Uh, well, what is it to, uh, you, the, about the environment, sustainability? You know, what, what is it that you look for? What is it that's always captured your imagination, going back to being a 26-year-old? Well, I don't know. I mean, it started when I was much younger. I used to organise jumble sales when I was a kid to raise money to save the whales and all that type of stuff. And I don't know, I mean, you could take a big picture view in it, which is, you stand back far enough, you realize we're just all on this weird little funny blue orb hanging in infinite, infinite space and there ain't anything else out there. And so the sooner we get our heads around that and act in accordance with that organizing idea that there's just one of them and we should all, if we want a good future, we should share it rather than sort of try and take as much for ourselves. Then there's that perspective. But there's also the perspective of, let's face it, I feel better personally when I'm involved in things that I can be proud of. So it's totally self selfish in that respect, but everything we all do is. So I like the idea of, as an investor, putting at our stalls saying, we're gonna do it for, for love and for money and for ethics and Life is richer and more rewarding when you get all those three things nicely humming together rather than going, I'm only about one of the three. And um, Jam Jar is the current. Uh, the future, I believe, could be art for everyone. Is yes. That, so, is that what it's called? Well, art I have set up this art movement called Art Everywhere. Yeah. Art um, Everywhere. Art Everywhere. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, funny enough, its aim is to make sure we put art everywhere and we kicked it off this summer and our launch was we went to the UK poster industry and we said look our vision is to flood the country's streets with arts with art sorry we need 
every single poster site in the country for free for two weeks and on it we're going to put the greatest bits of art ever created by this country and they did love the idea and they were very supportive now obviously i'd ask for every single poster knowing that that's not going to be achievable at least not to begin with but what i did get was 22,000 poster sites to be donated for free all across the country and on them as I said, we exhibited the greatest works of art of the last 500 years that have been created by this country, that are owned by this country, that was then voted by this country. We did a long list online and got people to vote for their favourites. We had 30,000 different votes cast. The top 50, the ones that we put on art, uh, sorry, on advertising hoardings all across the country. We're going to do the same again next year, but we're going for three times as many posters. And we've got a theme. It's love. So the theme we want the world's biggest outdoor art exhibition themed on art that is related to love, be it family love, romantic love, and unrequited love, suicide love, ev love in all its forms. Again, art created by, owned by this country. And what's the great thing about it is it's ultimately beautifully pointless. It doesn't exist to make you do anything. It doesn't, make, it doesn't exist to make you sell anything. It doesn't make, exist to make you think anything. It is purely for the love of art and saying for two weeks, wouldn't it be nice if we took down the adverts and stuck up some beautiful pictures that we can be proud of as being part of the cultural legacy of this country. And the love of art. Do you have the love of art? Is, is this, I'm not are, even, have you a painter? Are I'm you not, a... no, I'm not even, I'm, not, I'm really not from the art world at all, but I used this idea to sort of opened the doors into the art world and said, look, if, how about this? If I can get the posters for free, are you guys up for being involved and helping curate the art and get it all together? And they were brilliant. They didn't know me from Adam, but they were like, yep, yeah, sounds like a great idea because it's, it's altruistic. It's got no hidden agenda and it's certainly got no commercial side to it. It's pure, there's no logos. There's no sponsor. It's about just putting beautiful things out there. As I said, it's beautifully pointless, but some, some of the best things in life are. Richard Reed, I hope you enjoy your day here at Huddersfield. Thank you, I will do. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.